Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be discussing 10 things you might have missed in the Half-Blood Prince movie. The Half-Blood Prince introduced us to a whole new side to Voldemort that we had rarely seen before, Tom Riddle's past. Thanks to Dumbledore's memories and Professor Slughorn's recollection, we were granted a glimpse into Voldemort's early years as a wizard and how he eventually learned the secrets of creating horcruxes. Throughout the film though, you might have missed some of these smaller details that make the wizarding world so rich. So today, let's take a deep dive and check out 10 of these smaller bits from the Half-Blood Prince that might have snuck by you. Let's get into it. 10. Why Harry Was Sick Learning how to apparate was actually quite the skill. During the time of Newt's commander, the Magical Congress of the United States regularly hired officials to oversee apparition exams and judge wizards and witches on their skill level. And the students of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry weren't too different. Under the direction of Headmaster Albus Dumbledore, the students of Hogwarts learned apparition in their sixth year, but it wasn't a main part of the curriculum. It was an optional class that many chose to enroll in. By the time wizards and witches turned 17, they could finally test themselves in an apparition test and receive a license. But during the events of the Half-Blood Prince, Harry Potter's own inexperience with the spell was put on display when he became sick immediately after taking a journey via apparition. 9. Seven Stones for Seven Horcruxes We received a rare glimpse into Voldemort's past when Albus Dumbledore shared the memories of his visit to the young wizard's orphanage decades earlier. While there, Dumbledore heard the troubling tale of the boy known as Tom Riddle, and when the aged wizard went to Riddle's room to talk to the young sorcerer one on one, he learned even more. But if you looked carefully at Riddle's private quarters, you might have noticed that there was a nod to the seven horcruxes he would eventually produce after learning about the relic at Hogwarts. On his window ledge, Tom had collected a series of seven stones. As you might have heard me mention before, the number seven has special significance in the magical community, and was even proven to be more powerful than other integers by a famous 13th century witch. The fact that Voldemort had collected seven stones was no coincidence. 8. Minerva McGonagall's Other Battle Minerva McGonagall was forced to help lead Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry during Harry Potter's sixth year at the Institute. For much of the film, Albus Dumbledore was busy chasing down Voldemort's horcruxes across the British countryside, and on a more personal note, the wizard was consumed with fears about his eventual death. He had foolishly worn Marvolo Gaunt's ring, an item that cursed Albus Dumbledore with an unbreakable curse. Albus knew he would die soon, but he wasn't sure if Harry Potter and the brave wizards he would leave behind were strong enough to defeat Voldemort in his absence. But while Professor McGonagall did double duty as an administrator, the actress who portrayed her, Maggie Smith, fought her own battle. During the filming of this sixth Potter movie, Smith had been diagnosed with breast cancer, and in between shooting scenes, she underwent procedures that would allow her to eventually put the disease into remission. 7. Harry Potter's Son Appears Casting in the Harry Potter films has always been a bit wonky. Unlike other massive cinematic universes where the cast were primarily made up of adults, the Harry Potter films were composed of young, British actors. That presented its own series of challenges, and oftentimes would result in the filmmakers double dipping. At times, the same exact actor or actress would be called back to portray a completely different actor in later Harry Potter films. This much was true when Arthur Bowen was cast as a nameless extra in The Half-Blood Prince, and later assumed the role of Albus Severus Potter in The Deathly Hallows Part 2's epilogue. 6. Ginny Weasley's Artwork The Burrow was the name for the Weasley family's house. Although it was a tall, towering, uneven structure, you'd be wrong to think that it was any less of a home than Ron's friends and peers. Within the burrow, the Weasley parents, Arthur and Molly, raised their motley crew of children, and even brought Harry Potter in as one of their own. During the creation of the sets for the home in the Half-Blood Prince, some of the actors who portrayed the Weasleys 
even helped decorate the house. Namely, Bonnie Wright, the actress behind Ginny Weasley, helped set designers bring the burrow an actual lived-in feeling. 5. Horcrux Easter Egg While watching Albus Dumbledore's memories of a young Tom Riddle, you'll find more than a callback to the seven Horcruxes that Voldemort would eventually produce. On one of the walls of Riddle's room, there's a black and white photo of a dangerous chunk of ocean where Voldemort would hide one of his Horcruxes. To those familiar with the British coast, you'd recognize that the picture captured the cliffs of Moa, the place where the Potter filmmakers decided to place the cave that held the Inferi. 4. Slughorn's Wand Professor Slughorn was one of the newest members of Hogwarts staff during the events of the Half-Blood Prince. Infamously, Slughorn was one of the professors who foolishly trusted the young Tom Riddle, and even divulged some of the secrets of the Dark Arts that Voldemort would later use to create his Horcruxes. But despite all the mistakes in his past, Slughorn never really seemed like the malevolent sort. Instead, much like Gilderoy Lockhart, Slughorn was motivated by his own ego. He wanted to be venerated as a great master of magic, and he wanted to surround himself with the smartest up-and-coming magic users that he could find. Seemingly showcasing his good nature, Slughorn's wand wasn't particularly terrifying. It was a simple, gaudy piece of wood with a slug's head at the very tip. While other wizards might have tried to flee from such a strange name, Slughorn embraced it. 3. Slytherin's Green When Professor Slughorn revealed the secrets of dark magic to a young Tom Riddle, did you happen to notice what color the memories were filled with? It doesn't take a discerning viewer to note that the room was cast in a green hue. Just like the filmmakers had utilized green in past films, the color was specifically placed in this scene to emphasize Voldemort's role in Slytherin's legacy. Not only was he the school co-founder's heir, but he was also the greatest dark wizard that would come out of England, and perhaps all the world. 2. Voldemort actors are related Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince showcased Lord Voldemort at multiple periods in his life. The oldest and most terrifying version of the villain was portrayed by Rafe Fiennes. But did you know that he was actually related to one of the other actors who was cast as Tom Riddle? The younger Voldemort was actually portrayed by Hero Finds Tiffin. Hero is Rafe's nephew, and since he's several decades younger than his uncle, he was the perfect age to fulfill the part. Thankfully, Hero's acting chops were more than up to the challenge, as his version of a young Tom Riddle was bone-chillingly scary. 1. Slughorn Calls Ron Rupert the list of things you might have missed is filled with small factoids about Professor Slughorn, so I thought we'd finish out with one more about the infamous instructor. If you watched the film, you might have noticed that Slughorn had tried to get close and cozy with the most promising students at Hogwarts. As we already mentioned, Slughorn's ego was the only really evil thing about the man, and he would often count the accomplishments of his students as his own, in a way. So he tried to collect as many up and coming wizards and witches to his side as possible, so that he could bring up their accomplishments in conversations in the future, and casually let people know that he was their teacher. But with so much time and attention given to the smartest children at Hogwarts, Slughorn couldn't spare much time for the mediocre. So when Ron Weasley came to Slughorn, alongside Harry, it wasn't uncommon for the professor to completely forget who the youngest Weasley boy was. At one point, he even called Ron Rupert, which was a sly joke by the filmmakers, since Rupert Grint was the actor who portrayed him. Well, there you have it. 10 things you might have missed from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. How many of these did you know? How many of them were completely unknown? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I'm sure there is quite a bit more in this film for you to discover, so make sure you share your findings with us as well. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times, if one only remembers to turn on the light.